What's up, y'all? AJ Simmons, founder of the Clean Biz Network, back with another great interview for you guys. Today's guest is somebody I actually met in person uh, in real life, <laughs> right up in Chicago. She was at the Cleaning and Cocktails event. She stood out there. Then we ended up connecting on IG and I, I was able to see her business. And it's just obvious to me that she killing it. You know what I mean? And that Airbnb space is very obvious to me. So without further ado, please welcome Miss Mila B. What's going on, Miss Mila? To the top, they ain't none of y'all stopping me. Used to say I never get a ring, Charles Barkley. Now I got a wife, got kids on property. Bubble eye beans that look like that be watching me. Okay, I lied about the beans, but that was hard though. I'm still in that black act, but she starred though. Cause that's all it takes. Oh, don't flash it for I'm on my grind, not no more fashion show. We need that. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> for real. Thank you for having me, AJ. I'm so excited to be talking to you in your presence. You're doing all kinds of great things, and I'm just happy to talk to you. So thank you. Thank you. Well, it's one question I always ask in the beginning just to let people know who they're dealing with here. But before we do that, can I could you please share with us how to pronounce your full name just in case? Because I want to make sure we, we address you properly. Yeah. So let, let's talk about my real name. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> uh, my name, my real name is Ludmila Arzu Bahamolsky, but I go by Mila. I go by Mila B because my married name is like 10 letters. So <laughs> Mila Bahamolsky or Mila B is, is good with me or just that, Mila. But I won't try it, but Mila B it is. Okay. All right. <laughs> there you cool. go. Now, the question that I always start off just because I know that's what the audience want to know first is if you don't mind sharing could you share with us about where you are in monthly revenue i would say i would say our monthly revenue is between 30 and forty thousand a month nice nice i love it i love it so i know more about a year you know we do last year we did like six hundred and thirty thousand, so wow. something like that whatever that is divided by 12 <laughs> right <laughs> now let me ask you this so is that all airbnbs you don't have any commercial cleaning Correct. Oh, no residential, no commercial, 100% Airbnb cleaning. And if you know the business, I'm telling you now, you should understand how amazing that is. But we're going to jump into it as we go. All right. So let's jump into this. So first off, let's rewind. Get out the money for a second. Right. Who is Mila? Who is Mila B? Where are you from? All of that type of stuff. Oh, man. You know, that's always a loaded question for me. So um, my parents, they came from Honduras. Okay. Um, we're black people from Honduras who speak Spanish. We're called Garifuna people. We speak Garifuna and we speak uh, Spanish. Um, our people are like in Central America, Belize, Guatemala, Nicaragua. So my my dad immigrated when he was like high school age to United States. Okay. Uh, his uncle brought him before um, immigration was easier. So my uncle brought him over to New York <laughs> And then um, my my dad brought my mom because he had already met her there and he brought mm -hmm. her. And so my dad joined the military. He didn't he got a full scholarship to university, but he didn't he didn't want to do that. I think he just got, you know, to the United States and wanted to like live or something. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> he joined the military, but he did his 20 years. So 15, about 15, 16 years of my life was in the military. Military kids who lived on post surrounded by military families. I went to school with only military kids. So it was, it was good. I even went to my um, 20 year reunion last summer and it was kind of cool because we were all military kids and it's kind of cool to see your niche, you know, right. all together growing up. So yeah, I grew up in, um, I was um, born in Georgia, but then like nine months later we were in Germany and then my brother was born there. Then we moved to Oklahoma so I spent most of my time in being raised in Oklahoma and then came to Houston, I don't know, maybe 25 years ago. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Fair enough. So let me ask you this. So I was, I was kind of asking what brought you to the States, but that pretty much answers it for me. It's like, it was really a dad, right? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Now why the cleaning industry and specifically why Airbnbs? <sighs> this is a great question. Um, I, the cleaning industry, because obviously it's the easiest way to get to start your own business. Right. Now, I've had a business before, um, 
And what happened, how I got into this business literally is I traveled the world. Um, I, I had a business before I shut it down. It wasn't working. Um, I was fed up with life and I packed my stuff and I went to South Korea. A friend of mine said, come visit me. And I ended up living there for a year and a half. Yeah. And then traveling for six months uh, solo in Asia. So I grew up a lot doing that. So when I came back, I had nothing and nobody, you know, I had nothing. And um, I was sleeping on a friend's sofa for a while for about two months. And I was like, you know, I got to do something. So yeah. I used my 401k because I used to work in the corporate world. So I used my 401k, cashed it out and got an apartment and then bought a car. And then I said, now, and I paid. And the thing about it is I didn't have a job and I had to kind of lie to them because I never got my own apartment before in my life. <laughs> you right. know? So I was like, I told them that I work from home and I just started my job so that they can. And I said, listen, if, if you, I'll pay six, the six months right up front, just right. to give me an apartment, please. You know, and so that's what I did. And when I was sitting in my apartment, I was like, I listened to a, a lot of books um, and I was in, in my apartment. I was like, OK, I got to start a business again because I can't go back to the corporate world. I just that's it, does, it doesn't fit me. And I looked around my apartment and my apartment was super empty. I don't I don't obviously I'm pretty bare. I, I don't have stuff around. Um, and I was like, what can I do? What can I do? And I remember in a podcast or in a book, it said, start with what you have around you. And I saw my mop and I saw my broom and I saw my vacuum. And I was like, you know what? I've been thinking about doing an Airbnb cleaning business because, you know, I like the startup world. I like hearing about new businesses. You hear about Airbnb. And um, there was one time I stayed at an Airbnb and I was like, I wonder who cleans it for this woman because she traveled a lot. And I was like, oh, it would be cool to come to travel again and actually have a house to come back to. And while I'm traveling, my rent is getting, you know, my mortgage is getting paid and maybe make a little bit of money. But who's going to take care of my house for me? And I Googled right. it and there was nothing out there. And I was like, oh, I want to do it. But I sat on the idea for like a whole year because I really thought somebody's going to do it. Like it was obvious, but right. nobody did. So I was like, you know <laughs> what? I'm going to do it. Right. And that's how I started. Because, you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts and one of the guys, um, Pat Flynn, he does yeah. small passive income and he's like, there's niches in the riches. And it's kind of true. The smaller you focus, I mean, if you focus small, then you know that there's going to be um, business around it if there is. So yeah. I just started small and I was like, well, let's try it out. I had nothing to lose, really. You right. know, so that's how it all that's how I chose. Um, vacation rental or Airbnb cleaning is because it's niche and I didn't really have to think about all the services I would have to provide if I did office or residential or, you know, commercial. I didn't have to think about what what is all of this. I could think, focus on one thing. So, all right. You know what? I want to point this out for the listeners because there's a couple of things that stood out to me. Number one, that you're well-traveled. Number two, with the podcasts and audio books that you listen to because so many people miss it and it seems so simple to us. Like I know me personally, I live on audio books, podcasts, YouTube. I mean, it's playing nonstop every single day, all day while I work. Right. And people don't really notice how much of a difference that makes. And then also the traveling part, like me personally, I'm from a small town. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody's trying to show off for everybody. That same little stuff. Right. And it's like, but once I started getting away from that and now I completely moved from it, it's just the thought process is so much bigger. And so I really want to point out that out to the listeners, because if you're in that same small town or if you're not listening to audio books and stuff regularly, please understand this is how you get <laughs> to these positions that, that Mila reach as well as myself. So moving on, though, host keeper. Yeah, I said it correctly, right? That's right. You said it right. Host keeper. You know, I'm looking, doing my research for this interview, right? And I'm looking at the website. And I'm like, oh, my God, this thing is, it's its perfect. I can tell that whatever she's doing, I'm looking at the locations, which we're going to get to that in a minute. But it's like, whatever she's doing is working and she she got it. Like, I could tell you, you know something. <laughs> you know what I mean? So could you just please a little bit tell us, uh, I guess, give us an overview, a quick, you know, you don't got to go too detailed, but it's an overview of how your system works. Okay. Um, you know, I started grassroots. This is nothing like a franchise or anything organized or so even I it's thank you for the compliment because 
you make me sound more organized than I really am <laughs> in here. Oh, but um, so how my system works is really I started when I, I, I told you guys the story about how I just uh, thought about how I'm going to start it. But let me tell the next step was after listening to those podcasts, I learned how to build a website by myself. Yeah. Because, I mean, I had time, you know, and I was really focused. So um, what I did was build my website. I had my, no offense to, to the non-alcohol drinkers, but I have my bottle of wine right here, <laughs> my little snacks. And I, the, the whole weekend, Saturday, Sunday, I said, I'm not going to move from here until that website is done. I'm not going to procrastinate. I'm not going to wait till it's perfect. I'm just going to do it. So I did it. And I probably put it out on Monday on Craigslist with the website, www. Wow you know, with the website. And what I did know from learning from podcasts is SEO, uh, search engine optimization. Yep. So it was cool that Craigslist optimization was very good. So putting my website on there is getting me on the top of when people are searching for Airbnb cleaning Houston. Right. And you have to put that phrase on the Craigslist uh, post. So I put it and I got my first two clients by the end of the, the, the weekend. By the end of the next weekend, I got my first two clients. One of them is still with me. That's another story because we're collaborating on a business. It's wow. it's crazy because I cleaned by myself, folks. I did it by myself. So these people see me as just the cleaner, right. you know, and so now almost seven years later, now we're, you know, you know, doing business partnerships. It's, it's really cool. So, Yeah. That's how I started. Okay. So the system, <laughs> so, um, I put it out there. And so what I had to learn was by, by experience, because there's no Airbnb cleaning courses out there, right. uh, which I'm working on, <laughs> you know, there's none of that out there. So, um, I was very blessed to have that first client, uh, Tom, because he's an entrepreneur and he saw something in me that I wanted to get to the next level. And so he would always give me his tips. I would used to clean the place and close all the doors. He's like, you know, with Airbnb, you need the, the, the place has to feel inviting when somebody right. walks in, it's kind of eerie. You walk into somebody's house and all the doors are closed. So leave all the doors open, maybe do a little touch with the toilet paper. So he was kind of guiding me on his issues with his past cleaners. Right. And then giving me all that information so I knew what to do. And so from there, I'm starting to get more cleans and more clients and things like that. Um, are you talking about the system pertaining to like operations? When it I think I'm also looking for how did how are you covering so many different um, Airbnb turnovers? Because it takes a lot of Airbnb to get 40 grand a month. You know what I mean? So, right. so how, how is Mila not doing all of the cleaning anymore? What right. do you, like, how are you doing that? I mean, it was step by step. My next step was hiring somebody after me. Actually, you know what the most important step I think everybody needs to know is to get a mentor. And I know that people, that was hard for me to understand when people told me get a mentor. I didn't know anybody. I'm a military brat. People were moving around for, around me or I'm moving around them. We, you don't get to know people. You know, this is before Facebook. So score.org, like, you know, you scored a shot, score.org. I got myself a mentor from there and he was amazing. I, what I love most about him is that he was not easy on me. Yeah. You know, it was like almost like a father figure telling you, you need to get your act together if you're really serious about this. He right. was like, if you, you know, you're going to be wasting my time if you don't, you know, listen to my advice. Right. And I was like, man, that's what I need. I mean, I'm the kind of person that you need to tell me straight, you know, yeah. or I'm just not going to get it. So he, I got him and he was telling me straight, we would meet for a month, like every Wednesday or something. And he's like, this is what you got to do. Your prices are too low. I don't like your name. Before I was BB cleaners. I still own the name, but he didn't like the name B B Cleaners. So I had to go back. I had a whole bunch of different names. Go back. I don't like them. Come back and give it again the next uh, week. Uh, you know? And but the, I knew that he knew better than me. He sold his business for five million. Right. You know, back in the day, I mean, you know, a couple of years ago, that that that's pretty good. Yeah. You know, it's still pretty good if you ask me, but um <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but he knew better than me. So I I listened to him. Um, and then the next step is um, hiring people and then, um, you know, making, teaching them 
training them on how to do this job and then them doing it. So, and then my next step was I actually in the middle of it, of dating this guy who now is my husband, um, he was a great force in getting me organized. I'm, I am self-proclaimed disorganized, but he's like, okay, you didn't even register your business. You got to do that first. And he's <laughs> right. different. So he's like, I need everything. T's dotted, you know, I's dotted and crossed. So I was at, cause for two years, I didn't even put an LLC. I knew right. I needed to, cause I went to business school, but I didn't even think this was going to be a thing. So I was thinking, Instead of, because I did the LLC for my last visit, instead of doing all that structure and worried about the perfection of it all, let me just do it. I'll just right. do it and worry about the rest later. Let's just see if this business even works before you put a name on the LLC and, and do all of that stuff. So, you know, hiring uh, your cleaners, I trained them personally. Then my husband, he does the day-to-day -day operations. Then we hired an assistant to answer phone calls between the cleaners and the clients and, and um the best, I think, part of me learning to do all of this was um, bigger clients approaching me. There are companies out there that have 13 Airbnbs. I mean, I'm telling you, I had in San Antonio 90, no, 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 San Antonio 64 Airbnbs, Dallas 99 Airbnbs. I started out in Houston. Um, I, I first started in Dallas with 13. And, you know, that was manifestation. I used to not believe in this manifestation stuff. But let me tell you, it worked. So what happened was I started in Houston and I was, I was doing, I was doing all right. I was probably only doing 30 cleans a month. That's how much I could handle then started hiring people. And then I was like, you know what? I want to expand. I'm going to be in Dallas. Yeah. So I'm like, how am I going to be in Dallas? I put on my website that I was in Dallas coming soon. And right. so Google sees that I'm in Dallas, you know, the SEO that yes, SEO is a real thing. So you put you're in Dallas. And you have all the word, the right words that say you do Airbnb cleaning on your website. Somebody from Dallas called me for like a month later. Like, hey, I hear that you're in Dallas. Uh, we have 13 units. When do you have time for a meeting? Huh, when you want a meeting, I'm going out to Dallas. <laughs> right. That's how I started out in Dallas. Um, and uh, yeah, so. I guess the main thing is higher then. Right. Like, if you want to expand and stop cleaning, higher and what don't be scared to trust people right that's right that's what my mentor <laughs> told me you know i thought i was gonna do this by myself the whole time my mentor is like well you your prices are too low what are you gonna do when you hire somebody you need to have a cut for doing the schedule doing the operations talking to clients marketing all that stuff and and you need to pay your cleaner and i was like i'm not gonna hire anybody nobody's gonna do it as well as i do and right. he was like Come on, like we wasting time. If you, you know, you need to hire people. This is a really good business. You need to do this. And I, when somebody knows better than me and tells me to do something, I am going to do it. You know better than me, so I am going to do. So okay, let's see if I hire somebody then to see how that works. And I did it, and it, it worked out. So you know, even, like even that is genius, though, because you know how many times I see people, like for example, if I'm talking to a newer entrepreneur i know and we they know for a fact that i'm more successful than them financially right. but we'll talk but they do all the talking <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> they do all the talking and then if i try to say give them my advice i say well i'm not going to do it like that i'm gonna do it this way and it's like all right you know what i mean so <laughs> exactly even that is genius because that i'm telling you if i can get really if i get around anybody <laughs> i right. shut up as much as i can and try to listen so even that was genius just for you to say you know what you're smarter than I am. Obviously, you know, I mean, you've done it bigger than I, I wish I can do it as big as you've done it. I'm going to shut up and listen. And right. I, you said so many things here. I hope everybody is getting, I want to speak on every little thing, but I'm not going to talk their head off as your enemy. <laughs> but by God, you man. All right. Thanks, so but go. on top of that, he's much older and this is the old school way. And I did think a lot of the things he was saying was old school, but they were still successful in the old school right. way. Right. So right. if you're still successful that way, you can still add on with the new way with, you know, the new social media and all that stuff and internet. And yeah. So if you can be successful with just the fundamentals, you better listen to them. They know what they're talking about. Absolutely. So now I want to touch on this. Cause I saw that, like, I know you even just mentioned just now you expanded to, you started in Houston, right? 
You've expanded to San Antonio. I'm not sure how far they are from each other. But I do know that they're both in Texas, right? Yeah. But you also got on your website that you service San Diego as well as Atlanta, which is not close to you. So, right. like, <laughs> like, how do you do that? I guess, what made you branch to those areas versus, you know, covering more of Texas? Right. So this is what happened. I'm not in San Diego anymore. I could have been. I still get clients calling me. But I'll tell you why, because that's why you, you asked. Okay, so when the pandemic hit, okay, I got really comfortable because I had, um, actually, I didn't branch out until the pandemic hit. Honestly, yeah, I didn't. Because then I was like, I need to diversify. But let me go back. Right. Um, I was really comfortable with the one client I had in Houston. We had, and Austin, actually, at the time we were in Austin too. They had 20 units in Austin and they had 60 units in Houston. And we were doing really good. I mean, we're doing half a million dollars a year. Just that was the 80 right. units. Um, so I was like, okay, we're doing good. I mean, I'm not complaining. And right. I, was, I was pregnant with my daughter. So I, of course I need to kind of slow down, but we were doing good. Yeah. Um, so uh, the pandemic hit and we lost our whole, our customer just died. Literally. They went under and they never came back, you know? And I was like, man, that was, all of our main revenue, of course, we have, we do Airbnbs, like, you know, regular people who have a house or two houses, we service them too. And they're actually the ones that kept me alive when the big one, you know, fell like yeah. a giant. Um, but then that's when I realized, man, I, I need, we need to diversify. We can't just, you know, depend on one main client to, to funnel us. So that's when I was like, well, California, People don't stop visiting there. You know, even in the pandemic, they have beaches. They have nice beaches. So I'm like, and I've never been, um, I've, I've been to LA for work at one time, but I didn't see it. So I was like, okay, let's go to Cal let's go to San Diego. I mean, I'm just one of those spontaneous people. It really doesn't have any rhyme or reason. Yep. I was just like, let's go to California. And thank God I'm married to somebody who is just get up with me. Like, okay, <laughs> let's go, you know? And um, so we went to California. Actually, I had connected with somebody else who, that's how it started. I connected on LinkedIn with a guy. He's doing kind of like Airbnb for military families. And he kind of resonated me when I saw his story. And he's like, you know what? I have um, a partner in San Diego. He has seven units. Would you mind going out there? I was like, yeah, why not? Because I know I can get those seven, but I can get everybody else around too. Right. If I, you know try to contact all these people. So I'm like, let me start with these seven and grow. So that's what I did. Um, I ended up with like five different clients after a month because we stayed there a month, established, you know, teams and stuff like that. Right. But then as the California laws keep switching up because they were lenient when pandemic happened for Airbnb and then after they were not. And so my clients start losing their Airbnbs right. in their apartments. And I was like, well, I'm not out there and I don't want to look for more clients because then I have to look for more employees. So it kind of just dwindled out. Gotcha. And Atlanta is a new, a new experiment. Um, but also, I mean, one thing that nobody even knows right now, I'm talking to Milwaukee. So I have a friend who had a company uh, in Milwaukee and we're about to partner up because uh, he wants to walk away, but his partner still wants to do it. But she's not really good at finding clients, doing the invoicing and doing all that stuff. I was like, okay, well, let's merge. Let's merge companies. Let's become host keeper. And then I do all that work and she does all the on the ground stuff. Right. hiring, training. So that is going to work better. I already know it's going to work better than me um, hiring people and then leaving it. You right. Know? Right. So. Love it. Love it. So I really, I want to delve in that so much, but you know what? We're not going to do it no more. You know why? Because they're going to buy that Airbnb course when you put hey. it out, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's going to be worth it. So we're going to save all those details and I got to move on because now let's talk about this. All right. So all right. What has been your best way for getting customers? Has it been Craigslist? No, I mean, I don't do that anymore. I mean, I, I, I should. <laughs> <laughs> it, start, it helped me in the beginning. Yep. Um, no, I'm telling you my SEO on my website and SEO is not hard. It sounds like a hard word, but it literally is the content that you put on your website the what people are searching for on Google. If they're looking for you, if they're looking for um, 
I don't know, you know, home cleaning in LA or something, whatever, you have to put that on your website so that when somebody is searching it, Google knows that you have those words on your website, uh, Airbnb cleaning Houston, Airbnb cleaning Dallas. And I, I got on the top on the first page. So that's also important being on the first page, because let me tell you, when people are Googling and they're going to scroll, maybe the first page, if you're lucky on the second page. So it's just important to get <clears throat> and then I guess the aesthetic of the website yeah I know when I made my website I want people to understand what I'm doing when they see it and not question and I still have some work to do I think but it's pretty self-explanatory because I don't get calls from people saying do you do office cleaning or residential cleaning right. ever. they know exactly what I do yep. and so when clients who have you know you know vacation rentals they say okay this girl has scaled to other cities. She might be able to be able to handle my 80 units that I got in Houston. So, right. You know funny. what? I just want to point this out too. And because you built your own website, right? Yeah. I mean, this new one, I didn't do it. I paid somebody, okay. this, but before okay. I did. Because I was going to say, man, that one you got now, <laughs> it looks amazing. You know what I mean? And I don't know how the other one looked, but the point is you did it. And that's what I always like, even in my course, uh, my cleaning company, my cleaning business started course. Right. I teach people how to build their own sites just because it's oh, like good. when you are getting started, you got to bootstrap. You know what I mean? I, I know people, none of us are rich starting or most of us aren't. Right. <laughs> so it's like, just do it. You know what I mean? Like you didn't know how to do stuff. You, like you said, you got your bottle of wine here. You got right. your, you know what I mean? And you go in and that's exactly like, that's how I built my mobile app. That's how I built all my websites that I have. I get my little bill over here right. and I put a little music on or some instrumentals or something. And I go to work. You know what I mean? That's if right. I don't know how to do it, YouTube and pause the video over there, fix the thing over here, pause it. You know what I mean? And go yeah. in. Like I, the similarities that you're saying right now is unbelievable. It's like, but that's what it takes though. For the, yeah. and you got to be spontaneous with it. We organize it later, but just do it. Y'all I'm trying to tell you. Okay. All right. Back on track though. I had to do it. I was itching to get that up. All right. So <laughs> you you motivated me. So the oh, next wow. thing is hiring. What has been your best method for finding good talent? Oh, that's a great question because you know, <clears throat> I've been able to hire people and keep them and keep my relationships with them. And, um, and then they do a good job for me. It's almost like we're all working towards the same thing. And then on top of that, I hire people that, um, you know, I, I mean, a lot in the cleaning business, there's a lot of single moms. And for me, that's like a, a huge deal for a woman to get out and work for their child. I mean, that to me is, it's great. I have a kid and I can't do it without my husband. Y'all can just forget about it. Like, no. So, um, I, I also need know the needs of my people. So when, I mean, we do Airbnb cleaning, nobody's in the house. The guests got to check out. If you have a kid and you want them to be with you, I'd rather have you raise your kid than somebody else raise them. You don't know what yeah. that person is going to do to them. So, they can take their kid to work with them. I mean, as long as everything is cool, the kids, you know, the kids are not running around and I, I can, you know, I know they know that, you know, they can't be running around and doing all that kind of stuff. And most everybody's kids are going to sit on the sofa and uh, either watch TV or play on their device or anything like that. So it makes their life easier. Um, another thing that I do that a lot of people don't do, I hire people who speak Spanish those are some hardworking people. And the thing about it is they don't have a lot of opportunity because they speak Spanish. If that makes any sense, their, their pool of jobs is limited. So I open that up with living wages. Yeah. So it's almost like who doesn't want to work for me at the time? That's how I was thinking. Like, who doesn't want to work for me? I pay you good. You only need one job. You're able to, you know, raise your family so you, you got to think about your people when you're hiring and you got to think about the right people. It's not just for me, it's like an algorithm when when I'm hiring. And that's also going to be in the course. OK, so when I'm hiring, if I if I talk to somebody for the first time on the phone, if they sound lazy, if they sound they're like they're lying in bed, if they're distracted and talking to their boyfriend next to them in the car, I don't want them. Yeah, you don't care. You already don't care. You already don't care to raise your voice when right. you're speaking. 
right. So how how you we're not even gonna we're this interview. I already know this interview is over. If they don't follow instructions, when I put a post out, I put a post out on Craigslist. Indeed, I have something on the post that it's it's like a call to action. Yeah, that means you had to read it, and it's usually down at the bottom. And uh, before you contact me. You, you have to be able to do that call to action to contact right. me. And it's very simple. It's basically, what is your full name and maybe what part of the city do you live? Whatever it is. Um, you know what a lot of people do? They text me and say, I'm interested in the job. That's right. not what I asked you. That's right. not what I asked you. If you can't do that little part, how am I going to ask you? How are you going to clean my Airbnbs? Right. <laughs> right. I don't want to get into that. So you know. I just... Cut it out. I don't even talk to them. We're done. It's over. I don't even try. The similarities are crazy. It's like you would think we had, like, I, that's the same exact stuff I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I will put specific details in the job posting. And if you didn't text the number, the information that I asked for, it's like, you're not getting a call. But I got to waste my time. Even now, I do that. Like, when my, I got ads for my starter kits. And people will put interested. I told you what to do. In yeah. the, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The so thing. you're so, not interested. Right. I'm not applying. I'm not replying to you because you're going to get in the course and not even go through the course. You're going to make my program look bad. I right. want people who follow the directions. You know what I mean? How to get to it. So, but anyway, God, leave one. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you're killing it. All right. What else we got here? Oh, lifestyle. So were there any lifestyle adjustments that you had to make in order to build this business? Because, and I'll give you an example, like with me, you might notice I don't follow anybody on social media. I don't want to see too many things. Like, and every now and then I will follow, right? If I'm like chilling, I'm cruising. I'm follow. But once I'm in those periods where it's like, God, right, I'm building now, I unfollow everybody. It's not like a lifestyle adjustment that I have to make. Some family members might feel away because I'm not following them back. That's that's up to them. You know what I mean? I got to lock in. That's what I have to do. So are there any type of lifestyle adjustments that you have to make in order to stay focused? Oh, yeah. I mean, now it's different because now I have an almost three year old and I had to readjust, readjust and rebuild who I am. Yeah. But before um, I before I got married and had my daughter, I mean, I started this business and um, I was just majorly focused like this is my Ph.D. You know what I'm saying? People were you you pay a school to get your PhD, I'm, this is my school PhD and I have to study it and I have to learn it like nobody else before. So um, I know how I am. So that's another thing. I, I know that I don't like to uh, wake up early and I know, and I, don't listen to my advice. I'm just saying, I know who I am. They always say wake up early, but it's just not my thing. You know, <laughs> I know that I'm a night owl. I know that I can work until two o'clock in the morning from like 7 p.m. to two o'clock in the morning. I get it all in. You know, so um, I didn't pay attention to, and I was thinking about this the other day too, because I would just, you know, I was an entrepreneur, but I was just starting out and I had like 30 cleans a month. So I had a lot of time. So what am I going to do with that time? Right. Do I hang out with my friends? And I still hung out with my friends sometimes during the day, go to a beer garden, have some beer, hang out. But when I feel like I know that I need to work, you guys are going to be there. I'm sorry, or I'm going to find some new friends because I need to focus on my future. I knew that one day I would have children and one day I would have a husband and those things are going to slow me down as a woman in a business. So I need to run as fast as I can right now. You know, I wasn't focusing on dating you know, as a woman. Like, forget these boys. <laughs> they just a distraction, you know, and if, and if one can deal with your lifestyle, that's the one for you. And that's what my husband is. He was able to deal with and I told him when I started dating him, I was like, listen, my business comes first. I, you, you are here, but you are not going to distract me from what I got to do in my future, in my life. So he was like, dang. But, you know, then he understood. <laughs> so now, now we work together. But, um, yeah, you just have to be extremely focused. And now I'm getting back into it where I always have to have something in my ear. That needs to be, that's my lifestyle a podcast teaching me something right now I'm listening to hustle hard, uh, hustle harder, hustle smarter by uh, Mr. Curtis. Did you say Jack? So, yeah. and, and everything he's saying is, is this, it's the same. It's the same principles as all these good books are talking about, but I always have to keep hearing it because nobody else is going to encourage me. You know what I'm saying? I have to keep 
finding my encouragement and the ideas. And, you know, you hear about how people do certain things a certain way and like, okay, I maybe need to adjust the way I approach things and do it, you know, this way, because it worked for them. You know, you just got to he- keep educating yourself. Absolutely. And I just, I, t- I told myself I was going to not keep tagging on to everything you say. I'm going to kind of let the energy flow, but by God, so I got to, so, because we are at a position now, like me and you, we pretty much around the same levels. And it's just like, and I can tell you do a lot of the same things with the audio books and stuff. And we're in a position now where financially, technically, if we're speaking, we kind of can chill. You know what I mean? Like if we, if we honest, if you just only go off of, am I comfortable? Is this cool? We could chill, you know what I mean? But you have to keep pushing it. There's so many other great. Now, I mean, you, you, you hurting the world or we don't keep going. We building great things. We like, they could use your services in a, in a whole nother state. You know what I mean? And they're going to be missing out if you don't keep building. So it's like, it's destiny that you got. Anyway, I won't keep going, but. I mean, I feel you. I was thinking that the same thing. I was like, you know what? I told my husband, I, cause I don't know. I think it's like a defect inside yeah. of me. I'm like, we have everything we need. We have yeah. a beautiful family. We have a healthy relationship. We have a roof over our head. We got air conditioning. We got the cars we want to drive. We can really chill. But what is wrong or what is good in me that I just can't settle down? Yeah. I think it's just the future. You don't know what it's going to look like. You, right. you, we saw well the last couple of years. You don't know what it's looked like. So you cannot be relaxed. Right. You can't right. chill. I don't have millions of dollars to chill yet. And I think it will have to wait till then. And even then, who even knows? Exactly. I'm still going to chill. I'm still breathing. I got to do right. something with myself. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> All right. So I saw on your website, too, that you had a section called your favorite Airbnb. Oh, yeah. I clicked it and mm-hmm. I was like, wait a minute. I think this is an affiliate link, right. which means that she's figured out another way to monetize or add another stream of revenue. So am I correct? And then also, like, I guess what made you decide to do that? Yeah, I mean, it does add a stream of revenue when people click it and then they start they stay there. But it's honestly like a marketing thing that I'm doing so that my clients, those are all my clients. So it's not just random Airbnbs. Those are all my clients, Airbnbs. So it's me promoting them because they support me mm. as well. And then if somebody stays at their place and I get a couple of coins, why not? You know? <laughs> right. But it's, it's like, okay, I want to work with this person because they also market my place so that people can stay there. I, I like, I like the give and take. You know, they're really supporting me if they're hiring me and keeping me and I'm doing my best for them. And, you know, they're keeping me in their uh, in their loop. I I think I should promote them as well. Absolutely. All right. Now, also speaking of multiple streams of income, I want to work towards this. So you you mentioned having a course. I think you offer some coaching now. So I guess the first question I do, because I've been doing I've been picking with all the coaches there lately when I do interviews now because everybody did this to me. Why would you coach people in the same industry that you're in? Like, is that not helping the competition? Could you could you speak on that a little bit? Oh my God, that is a great question. <laughs> because I, I I'm still kind of sitting on that question. Yeah. I'm I'm still haven't like really pulled the trigger because I think, am I gonna create my competition? But we also I also hear from people who know better than me that it's not uh, it's actually like helping people. So the more you help, the more you raise, you know, the more you raise up. Um, so I was like, okay, let me just see it as helping other people and seeing people be successful. Yeah. I mean, it is hard because honestly, I think I'm the only one doing what I'm doing and doing it well and being able to scale and actually having good cleans. I mean, I know my competition, but they're not as good as me. I mean, this is just the, the truth. Um, as far as quality, um, now, as far as like getting more contracts, they're better than me, but, um, uh, but I, I'm all about reputation too. Uh, I want my reputation to hold better than, uh, how many contracts I got, but yeah, it's, it's hard to think about, but I, it's just some things that you kind of have to let go. It's like uh, whenever I had different startup ideas and I used to do like demo days and speaking about the business that. I'm, you know, launching and people are always like, well, why would you tell everybody, you know, the inner workings of how you're going to build this business? And it's like, not everybody can do what you do. You're still different. 
you know, know, there's enough to eat for everybody. And honestly, there's a, there's a, there's a big need for this business. And I like to see people succeed. Right. Maybe it's, you know, who knows it is a flaw or whatnot, like have, having more competition. But I mean, just like I'm, you know, listening to 50 Cent. I mean, he's not going to be the only rapper of all time and not always going to be, there's going to be people who are going to come up under him and they're going to have their own genre and they're always going to have their own people. And right. you just have to, and mentoring them, it's not going to hurt you. It's going to actually help you. Yep. So I agree hundred percent. collaborations and stuff. Absolutely. So now before we go on our lightning round, I'm going to do one more question for you. So long-term, what's your plans for your cleaning company? Oh, such a good question. Because honestly, when I first started, like I, I said before, I didn't think it was going to be anything. I, you know, registered it two years afterwards. So <laughs> uh, I'm kind of late in the game to, to think, um, because as we're going on, we realized we need an app as well. So we're working on an app that would help uh, uh, facilitate uh, our job um, and maybe other people's job. And um I would like to, I always say, I would like to be all over the U.S. and maybe even internationally. Why not? Right. Why not? So, I mean, I'm literally trying to figure that out right now. And and starting with, you know, I did my experiments with San Diego and Atlanta with not having, uh, you know, a manager there or a supervisor. But now moving on to Milwaukee and actually having so, and the business, their business is already operating. So it helps me a lot already. All I have to do is, push it to the next level. So if I can start collaborating with other people, I mean, hey, everybody contact me. If you have a cleaning business and you do Airbnb or you're interested in doing Airbnb, contact me. Let's let's build this thing bigger than what it is. Right. So that's what I that's what I plan to do. Get Hostkeeper everywhere. Let's get it. Let's get Hostkeeper out there, y'all. All right. Yeah. So now we're going to jump into this lightning round. So the way it works is I say a, a word or phrase or something. You just tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. All right. You ready? Okay. All right. Here we go. I'm going to start. I'm going to kick it easy first. Houston. Houston, Texas, living reckless. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And uh, all right. Let's see. What else we got? Uh, entrepreneurship. Mm, genius. Okay. I don't know. All right, outfit. The American dream. Mm. Twisted. Okay. <laughs> uh, resting. All right. All right. Uh, Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Okay. Uh, Instagram or TikTok? Oh, I'm not on TikTok yet. So Instagram. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, favorite hobby? <sighs> Hanging out with friends and, and drinking a beverage. I mean, I try a lot of different hobbies, honestly, but yeah. I, I like, I, I like to just be in the present. Yeah. That's pretty much my, I don't have any hobbies. Like it's kind of embarrassing. It's like, shit, drinking my drink, playing a game or drinking my drink to right. my friends or family. I don't really, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, right. right. I try different hobbies, but you know, my hobby is starting businesses and seeing if they work. Facts. You know, Facts. that's that's fun for me. And it don't even feel like work either. You know exactly. what I mean? <laughs> Plus you get money. There you go. Like what? <laughs> <You know? laughs> All right. Uh, key to business success. Education. OK. Uh, favorite movie. Oh, Pursuit of Happiness. Oh, yeah. That's a great one. That is a great one. Uh, yeah. Favorite book. Um, you know what? Actually, my favorite book is Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk. That's a great one. That is a great that one pushed me to grow that Instagram, even though it ain't big as it should be. But like when I was really pushing it, that book right there every day. That's right. It pushed me, too. That's why I loved it so much. That's why I still love it. It, it pushed me to the next level to actually go from not having a business at all to starting a business because He's in your ear. Like, yeah. you can do this. Like, what's wrong with you? Do it. You <laughs> right. know, you got to listen to the audio book if you guys haven't heard the audio book. I mean, he is really hyping you up. Absolutely. All right. Uh, favorite music genre? I like rap. I love Cardi B. I love, you know what I do love? And, and it's, we should, we should break it down even more to a smaller genre. Okay. I like, I like um, rap that, 
is kind of like the audio books mm -hmm. that encourages you to do better. Like, you know, Jay-Z, you're on to the next one. You know, you have like Diddy back in the day and even 50 and Eminem, they were talking about their struggles and then how they got out of it. Yep. That's what I listen to all the Cardi B, you know, her yep. struggles. I, it's not the poppy stuff. It's, it's listening to somebody's struggles, then being able to lyricize it. Yeah. And put it in a song and then basically tell their story. Right, I right. think that's genius. But anyway, <laughs> right. I can't do it, but I think I, I just want to say I agree 100, 1000 percent. Like, um, like because what, what are you talking about earlier? The uh, manifestation and, you know, law of attraction. That stuff is real. It sound all dreamy and airy, but it's definitely real. Now, you're not about to sit and think your way to this business being built. You're going to have to put some work in, but. The step that you, know I mean, attract upon yourself, like it's really even the music you listen to. So I agree on that's all I listen to. My friends yep. a joke because if they sitting and I'm playing the music, too much Rick Ross gonna start to come on, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But that's what I listen to. If they ain't talking money or getting it, then I ain't trying to hear all that other stuff. I ain't trying to do nothing to nobody, girl. No, I mean, I ain't trying. Right. You know what I mean? I ain't known all exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. They were. They remind me that it is possible. There you go. There yeah. you go. All right. So. What you saying that rap with your favorite genre? You know we got to wrap it up with your top five rappers all time. Here we go. Oh my god! I mean, I will never let go of Cardi B. I'm sorry, she's she's amazing. <laughs> you know, I'm you know I'm not a big music person, but I listen to them for my encouragement. Right. Um, I love uh, Cardi. I love who I, I I mean I love Diddy. I love Fifty. I love Eminem. Um, One more. One more. Who else is on my my list? I don't know. Let's just throw. Let's throw. Let's throw a little flip in there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like the talky rappers. I like the ones who said I did it, and you know, I like yeah. the. I actually like a uh, Slim Thug from down in Houston oh, too. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. I saw some thug in an elevator doing Airbnb cleaning. There was one Real. time he was on the elevator, and he was he was living in that building. And me and the other girl, she worked for the company, and we were just pretend like we didn't know who he was. <laughs> when he got off the, the elevator, we're like, oh my God, that was Slim Thug. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. funny. All right. So, and we got, I always ask everybody this towards the end. Miss Mila, if you got anybody watching this video right now, they're scared to take action and start their Airbnb cleaning company or just any type of company in general, what would you say to that person? I would say, listen to, the Crush It book by Gary Vaynerchuk. Listen to podcasts about business. I love um, How I Built This by Guy Raz uh, podcast. That's phenomenal. You hear the stories of people from zero and you hear how them speaking about how they got to the next level. Continue to educate yourself. That's what I, I would see. say. I agree 100%. And also, if you want to start a cleaning company, Stay right here. Clean Business Network. Come on now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate you so much, Ms. Mila B, for coming on. It's been fun. You killed it. And I want to know how can everybody follow your journey and especially how can we get more information about that course when you drop it? Oh, man. So I'm, I'm working on it. I'm getting my act together. Okay. So I'm on Instagram. I like Instagram. I'm on Instagram as Mila, M-I-L-A, the... T H E E, you know, like Megan Thee Stallion. <laughs> Mila <laughs> the Hostkeeper, spelled like this H O S T K E Y P E R. So Mila the Hostkeeper on Instagram. You can follow me on LinkedIn. Um, Mila Arzu, M I L A A R Z U. I, I kept my, my maiden name on there. <laughs> A Facebook. Um, where else? Mostly Instagram is where you can find me right now. Hopefully, we'll, and any announcement that I got to make, I'll do it on there. I'm also on Clubhouse. If anybody's on Clubhouse, um, Mila B on Clubhouse. Uh, right. I, I try to talk on there and speak about cleaning the cleaning business and just free, just free game. I just talk about it and just pick a subject and, you know, how to get clients or how to do this. I'll talk about it on Clubhouse and um, share my my story there. But nice. um, you can use Instagram to find me anywhere. Absolutely. Love we love it. Me. Make sure y'all go follow me to be on Instagram, y'all. <laughs> All right. So we appreciate you so much for taking the time out. It was a pleasure. And you have a good one. Thank you, AJ.
Thank you for watching my video and make sure you hit that like button if you liked the video because I know you did and also hit subscribe and right beside that subscribe button is going to be a notification bell. You got to click that because guess what? You never know when I'm going to go live. As a matter of fact, I might go live right now. So make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss my videos, all right? And if you want to start or grow your business, check out cleanbiznetwork.com, all right? We have cleaning business starter kits. We have a lead generation service to help you grow your cleaning business, all type of stuff. And also, don't forget to download the Calculated Clean mobile app as well, all right? So that's what I got for y'all until you click another video and go watch, man. Watch another video. Why not? Binge on it.